Have you ever heard that saying? The best business ideas are the result of solving a personal problem. Well, that's exactly how Nourished Life came to be, an e-commerce store selling toxin-free health and beauty products that solved a massive personal problem experienced by founder Irene Falcone. And after just three years, it's turning over a lazy $20 million. Before we get stuck into episode 389 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, I would love to remind you that the marketing gold is made possible thanks to American Express and Design Crowd. Design Crowd is the world's number one custom design marketplace where with access to 550,000 designers, you'll get the perfect design every time. Get $100 off at designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. And check this out. You've got to love it when your business expenses reward you. When you apply for an American Express Business Explorer credit card by November 30 and spend $3,000 in the first three months from the card approval date, you'll receive a bonus 100,000 membership reward points. Search Amex Business to find out how. New American Express card members only. Terms and conditions apply. (laughs) I always wanted to do that. I said, welcome to a small business marketing show Where successful small business owners share their souls To take your marketing straight to the lead Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show I'm your host, Timbo Reed. But you, oh, so much more importantly infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner. You're ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. And boy, oh boy, have we got a big show for you today. You're going to meet cubicle escapee Irene Falcone, who, without any prior experience in e-commerce, has created one of Australia's biggest, certainly strictest, e-commerce stores selling 100% toxin-free health and beauty products. I am going to finally reveal, not that you've been really waiting for it, my three steps to effectively getting an idea across. And we go back into the vault revisiting a past episode where we learnt a thing or two about how to move customers from like to love. (laughs) As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Hey, I've got some treats ahead for you in the coming weeks. Next week, you're going to meet Stu McGregor, who is the creator of Four Pillars, which is Australia's most premium gin brand. Plus, we catch up with Dan Presser, who's built a couple of really good, in fact, I'd go as far as saying great Aussie brands, thanks to a fairly cringeworthy radio strategy. And he'll be the first to admit it. We're going to pick it apart and figure out why it works. But right now, let's meet today's successful business owner, Irene Falcone. What I love about Irene's story is she had a really, really good job in corporate, which she left in order to start a business that solved a particular personal problem she was experiencing. I won't give too much away as she tells the story at the top of the interview. Suffice to say that it led to starting Nourished Life, which is an e-commerce business selling toxin-free health and beauty products that within just three years is turning over a lazy $20 million per annum. I love these stories. Hope you do. You're in for a real treat as Irene explains exactly how she's done it. Plus, there's a little surprise at the end. Well, not so much a surprise, but a very happy ending, so to speak. I started off by asking Irene what she was doing prior to starting Nourished Life. Oh, before I started Nourish Life, I had always been working in uh, marketing and advertising. 
So I was working for Universal Pictures, actually, doing um, their social media for their film, um, ah. for their film marketing before I started. So you're working the top end of town. <laughs> hey, big marketing budgets, you know, lavish anything, really. I was, you know, do you know I was actually the first person in Australia to ever advertise on Facebook? No way. I was, and it, you know how hard it was to book an ad on Facebook? I had to call America, get someone, and there was these little matchbox um, size ads um, that you would click on, and that was the only sort of advertising you could do um, on Facebook at the time, and I desperately wanted to book these little oh. thumbnail ads for one of our movies. <laughs> How, how did you knock up? How did, I think was the film. Knocked up. <laughs> I think it was a knocked up back in. The, that was the movie. How did you know? How do you know you were the first one? Did they Facebook say, "Oh, we've never had a phone call from Australia"? <laughs> Exactly that's amazing, and and, and uh, that's a that's a really good claim to fame. So no, I, don't, what, I, I, don't, I can't I can't one hundred percent substantiate that claim. By the way, oh, you, oh gee, I have to edit that out now. I was told. Don't let the I truth get the in the way of a good story, Irene. Exactly. Now you were working in corporate, and I understand that one day, and I'm looking at a picture of you on your website. My last day in corporate is the headline of that picture. Uh, I, you tell the story of uh, sitting on the steps at lunchtime, exhausted. Is yeah. that yeah? Yeah. And what happened? I was so exhausted, and I was a mum. I've got four children. I was a complete makeup junkie, so I was slathering my body with, um, well, now we find out I was slathering my body with up to 500 different chemicals um, every single day, and that's what women do. And I never really thought about what was, what was in, those, in those products. And um, I just sort of sat down on that step and I grabbed something out of my bag, rub it on my legs so I could keep walking. And I looked at the back and I thought, you know, what? that was really the first time I, what am I putting on my body? You know, that was the first time I ever really thought about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, it just sort of sat with me for the rest of the day. And then when I got home that night, I started Googling and looking up what these chemicals were and, you know, Google sent back some things that didn't sound very good about these chemicals. I thought, you know, I wonder if that is contributing to um, me not feeling great. And because I was eating well and, you know, exercising, and um, but I was putting a lot of chemicals on my body. And so I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to stop doing it and see if I feel better. And I stopped putting the, everything on my body. Um, and, you know, I worked in the film industry and we would have movie premieres and, um, I needed to put makeup on. Uh, I literally, did, I threw out my shampoo. I threw out, out everything, and I didn't have anything to use. So I was sort of forced at that point to go and look for alternatives. And you know, I really couldn't find a great. I couldn't find anywhere where I could find all you know natural alternatives to the mainstream products that I was using. Um, there was a few bits and pieces at the health food store and, and and stuff, but it was very hard to see what was really natural, what wasn't. And I found it all all really confusing. And, you know, they say the best business ideas do come from frustration, you know, or trying to you know, solve problems, a problem. Yeah. yeah, and that was my personal problem. And I thought, well, I wonder how many other people also would love to swap to natural products. So I set up a Facebook page and a blog and I started just writing about these discoveries. Oh, I found this particular lip balm that you can use instead of, you know, the traditional lip balms that, that are made from petrochemicals. Nowadays, five years later, most lip balms aren't made out of petrochemical anymore, but they were back in five years ago, they were. And, you know, I, I put that up on Facebook and lo and behold, would you believe it? Went like, nuts. Oh, my God. All, there were so many other mums out there with kids. My child has eczema. My child has this. I'm looking for a lip balm for this. And it really did take off. And so I wasn't alone. And that's the other exciting thing about social media. So often, and the internet, so often you think your problem is your problem, hmm. you know, and you're alone. But once you jump on social media and, 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 and you realise that there's actually, you know, thousands and thousands of people all wanting to know the same information. And so... Um, that's really how Nourish Life started. What a great story and, and very quick proof of concept by kind of asking the question or sharing what you found and everyone coming back to you. Did, were you, just going back to your corporate life, were you actively looking to get out and start your own business or was it not even on the radar? No, it wasn't on my radar wow. at all. I loved my, yeah, I loved my job um, and I, it was a really, I worked so hard to get that position because it was only ever four in the country. Um, so it was a really 
special job, yeah. So, um, But interestingly enough, when I left, I decided to leave because I, I was so passionate about what I was doing at that point and I'd replaced my income, you know, pretty much while I was Sort of still working there. <laughs> um, so hang on, hang on. Let's just explore that. You can't just go, oh, yeah, replace my income. And that is fantastic. So, what you have done, your corporate <laughs> job, you're loving it, you're on a good wage, you got the job you love, you discover this whole new world of people and toxins and toxin free living, and you get your back up about that and go, I'm going to do something about that. So, you start while you're in corporate uh, blogging, Facebook posting, sort of forming opinions and building a bit of a tribe, would it be fair to say? Absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, what happened, there was a little thing that that, that happened and that was that um, Channel 9 picked up my blog and I was on mornings and that really propelled my um, my Facebook following and um, and a lot. Actually, my website died, crashed at the time. Oh. We had so much, so many people um, <laughs> logged on. Um, and so that was huge for me because I got a lot of, extra exposure from, from that. So and, tell me uh, about the blogging, yeah. Irene. So because Channel 9, in order for Channel 9 to pick it up, it must have yeah. been a blog of substance. It must have been ranking well when they Googled whatever it was uh, for you to pop up. Um, yeah. What did you do? Just set up a little WordPress blog and decide <laughs> to express your opinions once a day or once a week? It was it was a WordPress blog <laughs> that was for free, that I got for, downloaded for free, yeah. um, that I was sharing to Facebook at the time. And it wasn't really the blog content itself, I think, that got their attention, but it was quite an, um, a shocking thing five years ago for somebody, a female, to mm. throw away $10,000 worth of cosmetics from their house and go ah. get it all in a garbage bag. Yeah, I threw out my husband's shampoo. Literally, we couldn't brush our teeth. Um, and so, and, you know, that was sort of, I was known for that. And then they thought that was a really interesting story. And it was about the, I guess, the going toxin-free movement. Yeah, right. Um, you know what? We look at it now five years ago, and five years ago from now, it was such a big deal. People were thinking I was crazy, that I was a hippie, I was a conspiracy theorist. But now, even the mainstream brands are taking out half the stuff out of you know out of their yeah. products now and claiming toxin-free. But back then, um, it really was an, an unusual thing. Yeah, so that's it. You get some media attention. And I was very lucky because I was one of the first to market. When, you know, when did you start? Uh, when did the e-commerce play come into being? How far, so, how many months after starting your blog? I started the blog after I had my baby because um, it's really interesting because actually all, most of my customers will find me after they've had a baby or they're pregnant because that's really is a, a, an interesting time when you think about your body mm-hmm. and what you're putting on it. Um, so that was, um, so he was born in December. So, um yeah, it started in about January 2012, and then I incorporated Nourish Life um, in October. So there was about eight or nine months there where I was blogging on WordPress, and then I decided to um, to move to a proper e-commerce platform. And there was another business um, that was just sort of selling off their, their website that I purchased, um, which is actually I use a custom-build website with the... Um, which is coded. No, I don't use a, okay. a particular platform. So just, yet. just so I understand this, because this is yeah. where the business start. This is where the business is born, essentially. Up until then, yeah. you're just a content creator. Yeah, so, have yeah. you gone and purchased an e-commerce store that's selling toxin-free products to get a kickstart? Is that what you did? Yeah, I did. Okay, that's exactly what I well, did. You, yeah. you sound guilty then. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I didn't start from scratch. <laughs> no, because I don't think I would do it. Um, no, ah. because I made so many mistakes back then. The, Join the, the club. Oh, you know, I, I completely took that website and gutted it um, and, and completely gutted it. And, and looking back now, I think that was a really silly thing to do because I lost all the, the, the Google rankings on that yeah, site right. that would have had some Google rankings. It took me a good 18 months to get even a rate, even to get on Google's radar. Um, and I did to do a lot of blogging to get back up there. And it's interesting because I deleted all the blogs and content that was on the original site. And if I could go oh. back in time, I would have kept them all. What is um, that? Well, that's interesting. I, I passed yeah. uh, I passed a friend's business only this morning uh, who he just sold his business, put a lot of effort into branding. He even went to the effort of uh, his shop front. He got a famous graffiti artist to do a whole lot of work on it. I noticed the new owners have come in. They've completely completely changed the logo, the branding. They've painted over the graffiti and from what I understand are changing a whole lot of other parts of the business. And I'm wondering, well, 
what are you buying? If you buy something and then go and change it, what are you actually buying? So you, you realise that now, right? I do, and I think that was, you know, you learn from your mistakes and that's, pro- you know, probably one of the um, the biggest regrets that I have and I think the business would have got off the ground sooner. Yeah. Um, thank goodness that I was able to use Facebook and social media to get um, my name out there, but had I um, not completely taken a platform and completely gutted it, um, I think I might have been able to do it faster. So don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, so number one. something... Tweak it, but don't completely change it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess one thing you were buying, I'm, I'm gathering that business must have had a list of past customers that you could market it, to. Yeah, so that's another really interesting point. It had a list right. of 600 customers <clears throat> and um, and they all didn't top with me <gasps> because, yeah, so that's another learning as well. I wouldn't, yeah, so, so I had a list of 600 customers and they just were not interested in anything that I was doing because it was so different to what, where they had before. Mm. So it looked so different to them. It was completely gutted. It was rebranded. I wasn't even really selling the same products as they were because, of course, I'm very strict on with what I sell. So they, for them, they were quite um, annoyed with me and I wasn't able to retain any of them. In fact, I was annoyed I paid for the list. I'm, guess, the I'm guessing there was some tears around this time, Irene. Would I be right? Yeah, there have been a lot of tears. <laughs> There's been so many, yeah, and blood and sweat with it as well. Was there a moment when you've looked at Hubby <laughs> having deleted the blog posts, having realised that 600 customers that came across with the purchase didn't want to talk to you, where you've gone, you know that job I had, you know, in the nice mahogany office? I think I'll go back to that. You know what? I've never thought once the entire time that I was struggling as a business owner. I mean, I remember um, because we had my husband, I made my husband sell our house so we could get out of our mortgage so I didn't have to work. And we moved into, um, and then I saw my car. So I used the car sort of to to buy stock and get some warehouse rental. Um, And then what was left from when we sold our home, I I, I cleared about 20,000. After I paid, my, that was the profit on my house. And so um, that was enough to pay rent for a few years. But we were renting this really small place in, and we had the kids in bunk Four beds. Kids. It was like a two-bedroom house. Yeah. And, and, and so, can, I, can I just ask, yeah. Is the you did all that with the belief that you were onto something because <laughs> of the Facebook posts and the blogging that yep. you'd been doing pretty well? Wow. Yeah, because I because of the feedback I was getting wow. every day. Yeah, because I had about um, a couple thousand followers on Facebook, and I was getting hundreds of emails a day from women already That's asking me questions. I, I, yeah, a couple I was of thousand 10, followers 20 orders a day. Yeah, uh, so a couple of thousand followers is not here or nor there, but hundreds of emails a day. Um, what saying? What? Yeah, go Irene, love what you're doing, or asking you where they could buy no, a particular I, shampoo, or yeah. 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 Um, yeah when something. you're getting this product back in stock, um, do you have a natural alternative for this? Do you have a natural alternative? This is the exact colour that I wear in this particular brand. Do you have a natural version of it? Yeah. Um, I have oily hair with, you know, greasy roots. You know, what can you recommend? Or my child's got eczema, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know what I did? The, the Probably the best advice I can give any business owner is that I listened to my customers um, those every single one of those hundred emails a day, I read them all and I, I replied to them all. And I really took uh, they, a lot of people like to give you feedback as yeah. well on how to do things better. And um, in the beginning, I was quite annoyed. Thinking, what, this is my business. I know what I'm doing. Who are you? Go start your own business. You think you can do it better? Um, but actually, I started taking um, advice on board and listening to people. And um, and I've pretty much every single thing my customers have asked me to do, I've done. And I think that's what taken it to where it is today. Very interesting because I don't think think there's a a right or a wrong here, but let's talk about Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, who didn't listen to customers. I mean, he said, you know, I've told this story before, but he came up with this little white box that said, hey, listen, everyone, throw out your CDs. You won't need them anymore. I'm going to give you this little white box and you can download music as software from a website that I own. Uh, (laughs) That became the iPod and the rest is history. But if he'd asked people, they would have said you're mad. So um, it's interesting that whole listening to customers thing. You either do or you don't. And uh, as I said, no, not, there's no right or wrong answer. No. Well, for, for me, that was the right answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, but of course, yeah, everyone's, everyone's different. But I, um, yeah, and I just knew, I knew, 
wholeheartedly with every cell in my body that that um, this was the right thing to do, that this business was going to be successful, and I did not ever have a doubt in my mind, ever. I well, cried a lot about the stupid mistakes I've made, but I never had a doubt that it wasn't that the outcome wasn't going to be the outcome so, that it so is. What's the crying about? Because you said you've never, ever looked back. So yeah. what was the – can you reflect back on a moment oh. where you, you were sobbing, you know, that, that deep cry, <laughs> and, but you kept going? I think I cried mostly over um, the – I think – the, I wasn't. I was a marketing person, and I wasn't very good with the accounting side of things or the legal side of things. And I was very frustrated that I didn't understand. I couldn't get MYOB to work at one point. I cried the most over, um, like the myob and zero <laughs> sort of stuff. <laughs> Bass. Um, what do you mean I've got to pay ten percent of all this back? What? <laughs> what do you mean? When, when, I can't keep this. Yeah. What do you mean? That's mine. That's everything mine. <laughs> 100, 100 cents in the dollar's mine. I, re- I remember the people from the government ringing about, I hadn't lodged a bad for a year. I was like, what? What's that? What do you mean? And I was just like, totally spent that money by then buying more stock. Um, so I definitely did some tears over at the accounting side of things. As that's definitely been a, you know, hard for me. Um, you know, I, I also, you know, I cry over a bad review. I'm really, really passionate about my business. And if a customer's not happy and they write me a bad review, I feel really gutted about it. Personally, I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart. Um, you, so you're you're ignoring like the that. other the other 99 really good reviews, are you? Yeah, right. yeah. I've got like 1,200 five star reviews on my Facebook page, and like you know six one star reviews, and then I'll cry. Mm. Wow. Yeah, because I care a lot. It's not about the money and stuff. You know, it's about I care about the business and I care about my customers and. Um, yeah, I always want to do the right thing, but you know it's hard to do the juggle. It's very hard to keep every single person happy. We have thousands of customers now that we've got to get orders out to their door, and you know if that doesn't get to their door quick enough, they'll complain. And you know, we, uh, I don't know. It's hard to always guarantee. What, well, I, I, I think um, you know, I think the care. Time. I think care has a reason for your success, <laughs> listeners. I am talking to Irene Falcone. She is the founder of the toxin-free e-commerce store, Nourished Life. Irene, you just tell me about your hubby because I'm a hubby. I'm a hubby to a, a lovely lady. And if she said, we're going to sell the house, we're going to clear the mortgage, we're going to sell the cars, I've got a business idea, I don't know whether I'd be as uh, forgiving as your beautiful husband was. Is he, um, is he just a good guy, is he? I'll tell you a secret. Just between you and I. Yeah, yeah no one listening. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's my second marriage. I don't think my first husband <laughs> allowed me to. <laughs> Hello to Irene's first husband. <laughs> oh boy! So which uh, one, which one yeah. was the was hubs husband to the one around when you decided to go into this business? Yeah, it was. Right. Yeah. So he's just definitely. a good guy, flexible. He's a, he's a really great guy. Uh, he's a great dad. Yeah, and so my current husband um, definitely understands me. And that I like to do crazy things, and and that he right. just trusted me so much. My first husband was a lot more um, um, traditional. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> get, get back <laughs> into that home. But, you know, so the, is it di- what's for dinner? He's probably listening, <laughs> but um, yeah, <laughs> great guy. Now, but, yeah. <laughs> this is this is a big question, and I'm sure there's not a simple answer to this. But what fascinates me about Nourished Life is how you've gone from zero dollars to twenty to a twenty million dollar turnover business yeah. in the space of thirty six months. And my question is, how? Um, okay, well, th- there's there's a simple answer to that, actually, um, and that is that. The, I, I started a business at the right time. Uh, if the world didn't move towards eco-friendliness, no animal testing, plastic-free and natural products, and people stop, didn't care about the environment, and that was a fad, and people didn't care about animals or their bodies, then the business wouldn't have worked. But social media has been able to... Um, uh, highlight some of the the um, impact that 
things to have on, on our very friends and our environment and more and more people are feeling passionate about wanting to do the right thing and I started a business that ticks all those boxes for those people and um, easily as well because uh, people are lazy and, um, and I do all that hard work for them so it's a wonderful thing for people you know for the environment and and, um, and that trend is um, growing faster than I think any other trend you know that I can remember so I wonder if you're being hum- was- humble because <laughs> five years ago, mm. it feels like it was happening before then. It was happening way before then that people were concerned about toxin-free living and environmentally friendly packaging. And Or am I wrong? Or it was, you really do think it was... I mean, you've done some other things well, there's no doubt, which we'll talk about, but you really think the timing was everything? Yeah, I think that um, the timing... Was was everything? I mm. I wondered I wondered many times if I had started my business ten years earlier, would I be bigger now? Would I be a hundred million dollar business and not a twenty million dollar business? And I think no. I think perhaps it might not have been successful because people weren't ready for that. Um, but I think natural beauty and um, and the environmental things are, are, are well. The stats are there. It's growing at a, at, a, at a huge rate. And so my business um, started – I have first-to-market advantage on that as well. Um, I was able to build a lot of trust in the early days. And also I think I had a lot to do with converting people mm. as well mm. to, you know, thinking about the environment. So there was all those things in, in place. But the, then the products are great. You know, the products are really good. There's an incredible amount of farmers and – small businesses in Australia that are now big businesses because of the products that they make that I uh, sell for them. Because you drop you know? ship, right? You don't have no. any of your own brand. Okay. Well, how's it work? No. Yeah, no, we have about 5,000 SKUs all in our warehouse. Oh, you're warehousing? Okay. Yeah, warehousing. And we also, I now also have my own line of products as well. Mm. So, um, no, we don't, actually, no, we don't drop ship because we used to, to do that, but, um, you know, it's <clears throat> not being able to control um like those customer complaints, I don't have my order and you haven't sent it, it's very hard to yeah, control yeah, that, yeah. Which, is, which is one of the reasons I don't. works really great for other businesses. I think dropshipping is a terrific business model, um, but not re- really with 5,000 SKUs, more for smaller, you know, uh, not with that many. You've got, you got great products. You've got a great website. <clears throat> I encourage anyone listening, if you want to see a good e-commerce website that kind of makes you want to buy, then either do or don't go to uh, Nourish Life because <laughs> you'll probably walk away a little bit poorer. Um, what what is the one secret to great e-commerce? Do you think? Well, I feel like I gave it away already, and it's not get remarried. Don't say timing. Don't it's say not, a good husband. And it's, not, it's not that. I think it's listen to your customers. Okay. Be, um, and and be genuine to your customers. Yeah. Um, and listen to them. I think that men. I mean, we've all emailed, haven't we, online stores or companies and not had a response? Yes. Or we've posted on their page and not heard back from them? I find it bizarre. I I find A, bizarre not getting a response. B, bizarre when you get an email that says do not reply. Like, really? This is a not not automated email, not checked email or whatever. I don't know. Some people are a bit precious. I think they need to get out more. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think the time that you spend interacting with your customers, not only do you um, win a customer for life, but you also uh, take on feedback as well. I mean, just little things. Like we have a lot of customers in WA and it takes seven to ten, ten days to send something to WA through Australia Post. And just having um, our WA customers wish that they could get their product sooner was just the sort of push we needed to, you know, get Star Trek on board that can do next day to WA. Um, so just little things like that. And now, you know, we have a huge WA customer base mm-hmm. um, and that customer base wouldn't have been as big if I had not have listened to those customers, you know. So it's just little – you don't realise, but the little tweaks that you make mm-hmm. and that you do, they, they add up to a lot in, in the end. So you think, oh, it's just one little thing they can do that, deal with that or I'll do that another time. But actually when you just do it, it, it does. It adds up. I think that's um, been another reason why we've I've been able to grow the business so quickly. You got two hundred and twelve thousand followers on Facebook, seventy two thousand on Instagram. How have you done that? 
Let's talk well, Facebook. And, and, and when I say how, yeah. I mean, types of posts, yeah. what are you posting there to get such engagement? I think it's good content. Can I, you know what is really interesting? <clears throat> Again, you've got to listen to your customers. <laughs> I posted some stuff back in the early days that wasn't related to um, natural products yeah. and what I sell. I think it was a meme. It was a meme. Or I said something about Bachelor or something. And you know what my customer said? I came here to find out about natural products. Yep. Right. Not to see jokes. And I stopped doing the, the memes and the, yep. you know, this is what I watched last night posts. Because, you know, some, because they taught you to, when you're talking to customers on Facebook, talk about general things in the market and be really genuine and whatever. And so I was. And I realised people really didn't care about my day. They're here to pick, um, to, 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 to find out about products. So I thought, well, that's interesting. When you come to Nourish Life and you go to my Facebook page, you're only ever going to hear about natural products. Take it or leave it. It is right? a great lesson. People listen yeah, to this show to it. <laughs> for, for marketing tips. If I start talking about cash flow tips, well, they're going to go, well, I didn't come here for cash flow tips. Yeah, go and somewhere I didn't else. come here for puppies. No, I, like, I don't mind puppies. <laughs> I know, but people didn't come. I know, but puppies are great. But you know, there's a lot of puppies and kittens already on Facebook. Yes. So, um, so yes, I think that's how it grew. I only gave people content that I knew they were interested in, and I knew they were interested in it because they were emailing me asking me these questions about this particular product, yep. um, or, or so something like you know, again, eczema and kids and things like that. And um, and in, I actually really interesting as well. I put on a naturopath um, because. We would get a lot of questions that I couldn't answer because I was I'm not a doctor or a healthcare professional, and I would say you need to go check with your healthcare professional. I got so many emails from people that I had to send away to other naturopaths. But I thought, why don't I just hire a naturopath? So now we have an in-house naturopath, and she answers all these customer questions. You know, can I have this for breastfeeding, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And so we can get a lot of content from her on Facebook for Facebook as well, and help people with things like you know general rashes and bumps and bumps and things like that. That's so, again, a great it's giving idea. free advice, you know. Mm. So people can email or, what, hit you up on Facebook and you get the yeah. naturopath, the Nourish Life naturopath to, yeah. to put a two bobs worth in. I love that. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you email, your PM, your Facebook, it doesn't, Insta, I don't care how you contact us, you're going to get the same response. Full-time you know, natu- same. Full, full-time naturopath? Yes, full-time naturopath, yes. That wouldn't have been cheap. It's worth that, that, yeah, and that's and isn't that incredible mm-hmm. that, that 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 business has um, the business has grown really well. Was yeah. a, it's a risk, yeah. Well, you know, I think that if, if for the first um, couple of months, if it wasn't working, then I would have had to yeah, let it go. Yeah, yeah. But Send it back to uh, every clinic. single. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, <laughs> every single investment that I've made for my business has paid off. Every you're like you know? you're like King Midas. No. <laughs> So now let's talk because this is a very timely interview. You have yeah. you're literally in the midst of this. Well, the sales done. Nourished yeah. Life has been sold to a top ASX comp- listed company in Australia. You are in the process of handing over, but staying on. Was that part of the plan? Did someone uh, knock on your door with one of those <coughs> really big checks that you see on TV and said, <laughs> "Irene, we would like Nourished Life. Uh, how much? What happened?" Yeah, no, I had absolutely no intention at all of selling the business. Uh, and then I was approached by um, the, com- the company, uh, BWX, they are, um, and they're a listed business, an incredible Australian business, actually. And I thought, I'm not going to sell to these people, but I'm just going to hear what they've got to say anyway. And um, I met them and I literally fell in love with them. I was so excited about their processes. For example, they Irene, how ex- really well. <laughs> Irene, how excited were you about their big check? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not about the money for me. Good on you. Um, no, it's not about the money for me. And, you know, I've got shares in, in, in the business and, um, and no, it's about, um, no, y- you must know me from talking to me now. It's yeah. never about the money for me. But you know what I can do now? I can get those products to my customers faster. I'm going to get a bigger warehouse. I'm yeah. going to have better systems because I'm one person and I don't know everything. Mm. Like, 
I, you know, as you know, I know about Facebook and how to talk to people, but I don't know about really running a business. And so to have people that know how to run a business and that can help me with cash flow and all of those things wow. um, is just such a great safety net for Nourish Life. And I'm staying on, absolutely not going anywhere. Yep. Um, and I'm just so happy now that I've found people that care about my business as much as I do. That is amazing. I think yeah. the next three years may well be the, the first three years may pale into insignificance compared to what the next three years holds. Are we going to have to talk? I, I think I'd, I'd love to do that. <laughs> no, I, I, it's funny because I, I mean I always say you know I should reconnect with past guests, but there's so many other business owners I need to talk to. But I think it is an interesting thing to do to reconnect to say where are you now? Because I know you know I've had past guests that are out of business, and I've had past guests that have gone from a million to a billion. So. Um, would love to reconnect and see where Nourished Life is at. And um, just to finish up, where would you like to see? Like what's the big thing that you would like to happen next for the Nourished Life brand? Oh, well, I'm really excited about Life Basics, which is our house brand because um, cause we have a really big customer base and a lot of most of the products or all of the products that I buy, <clears throat> you know, through a middleman or through a wholesaler um, and so that to be able to produce our own products and send them direct to custom, sell them directly to our customers at a cheaper rate. Um, and because I strongly believe that, I mean, in the beginning, everyone thought that organic products were expensive and they were only for rich people. My entire business is based on organics for all. You know, every single family in Australia should be able to buy, you know, organic mm-hmm. products. Um, and environmentally friendly products and not have to pay more for it. And so the more and more that I can produce our own products, that becomes a reality um, and that, oh, gosh, that excites me <laughs> I so can much. Tell. <laughs> I love it. I love the fact that you can hear the excitement in your voice. Irene, <laughs> well done on being Thank a cubicle you. SKP despite the fact that you loved your job in the cubicle. Well done on turning <laughs> Nourish Life from nothing into a $20 million turnover brand in three years and well done on getting the sale and I think you've, you're inspirational and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, there you go, team. Nourished Life's Irene Falcone. And I meant that, what I said at the end there. I think what she's done in such a short amount of time is absolutely amazing. And uh, I will. I will catch up with her in a year or two's time just to check in to see what kind of empire she's building. Coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Irene. Plus, I've got another low-cost marketing idea for you, which I'm quite excited to share with you. A big thanks to the American Express Business Explorer credit card for making this show possible. Now, whilst it can't get rid of your business expenses, sorry guys, they're a fact of life, it can help by having your business expenses reward you. You see, new American Express card members who apply and spend $3,000 in the first three months from the card approval date receive a bonus $100,000 membership rewards points. Plus, your new American Express Business Explorer credit card comes with up to 55 days interest free and a competitive interest rate of 16.99% per annum. Now, I could go on about how it comes with complimentary travel insurance, two entries to the Amex Lounge at Sydney International Airport, or the fact that you can earn up to two points for every dollar you spend, but I reckon you get the point. <laughs> or should that be points? You've got to love it when your business expenses reward you. Search Amex Business to find out how. New American Express card members only. Offer ends 30 November. Terms and conditions apply. Ha! I did it again. Cheap, quick, great. I used to work with a designer who'd force me to choose two of those three options whenever I wanted something designed. As a small business owner with limited funds, it drove me nuts that I could never have all three. That's why I love Design Crowd. You see, Design Crowd is a website that helps startups, small businesses, and marketers outsource custom design from logos and business cards to websites and landing pages. In fact, Design Crowd gives you access to over 550,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. Here's how it works. 
You post a brief describing your design need. Within hours, you'll receive your first design and over the next three to 10 days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 different designs from designers around the world. You then pick your favourite, make any changes and pay the designer. You know, whether you're an entrepreneur looking to set up your brand or an established business that needs marketing collateral designed, Design Crowd is your answer. For a special $100 VIP listener offer, go to designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo or enter the discount code Timbo when posting a project. See, now you can have cheap, quick, and great design thanks to Design Crowd. My top three attention grabbers from a chat with Nourished Life's Irene Falcone. Thanks to American Express and Design Crowd. Attention grabber number one. Well, I guess there is something to be said about listening to your customers. Now, despite Irene's obsession about listening to and actioning everything they fed back to her, I do think there is a balance to be struck between listening to them versus listening to your gut. I am more inclined to listen to my gut, but I do listen to you and I implement some of the things that you feed back to me on social media and email. I love it. I love hearing from you. Tim at timree.com.au or hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. Love hearing what you got to say. Attention grabber number two, make sure your significant other is on board with what you're doing because it makes life a whole lot easier. I've spoken to enough sort of family business owners now over the years to realise that support of partner is kind of mission critical to having a successful business. And attention grabber number three, blog, B-L-O-G. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, start blogging, get clear on your editorial mission, start a blog. Become an opinion leader. Stick your head above the trench. Get found. Don't know how to start? Then buy my book, The Boomerang Effect, over on my website. It explains exactly how to do it. Love to know what grabbed your attention. Head over, leave a comment, smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 389. What have you got? To lose. Oh, yes, indeedly, doodly. It's time for one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately. One that's not going to cost you a fortune and that might just generate you more awareness, more inquiry, and ultimately more sales. I call today's idea the chunk it till you make it hack. <laughs> Over the years, I've been a keynote speaker at hundreds of conferences all over the world. My most popular keynote is one in which I explain why and how to create insanely helpful marketing. It's full of solid ideas that I know deeply resonate with my business-owning audience. But it wasn't always that way. For a long time, my presentations were simply a jumble of ideas presented in a fairly non-persuasive way, I've got to say. That all changed when I learned to package my ideas into chunks made up of three key elements. So here's my three steps to chunking it till you make it. Step one, get crystal clear on the idea you want to communicate. Step two, come up with a story and a funny, a little gag, that supports your idea. The story doesn't have to be overly complicated and the funny doesn't need to be side-splitting. Don't put pressure on yourself. Just enough to put a smile on people's faces. And step three, write out the chunk word for word. That way, you get to familiarise yourself with it, deleting unnecessary words and adding more appropriate words as you go. And here's the pro tip. Use this formula for creating a 30-minute presentation made up of, say, five chunks, four or five chunks. Create a slide deck and then find an audience to present it to. You will be amazed at how much easier it is to get your points across. 
That's my three steps to chunking it until you make it. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 389 where you'll find a link to this post plus some additional resources to bring this idea to life, including links to two amazing books on storytelling in business plus an interview I did on the same topic with an absolute expert on the topic. So, what have you got to lose? Oh, boy. You and I cover some serious marketing ground in the show, hey? If you have been listening for a long time, I thank you for that. If you haven't, go back into the archive. I think you'll be fairly uh, chuffed, impressed, excited, I don't know, something with what you'll find. Have you listened to the chat I had recently with the Healthy Guts' Rebecca Coombs? She was struggling selling her high-priced core product up front, so she created a fancy but very, very effective, I've got to say, ascending transaction model. Sounds fancy, it all gets explained, that led to her prospects loving and not just liking what she offered. I set up an initial coaching program, but I wasn't known. So the value that I was offering didn't seem great because... Nobody. No, I, w- I was just a nobody. Yep. So I actually had nobody. to... Yeah, a sick nobody. Mm. Getting better nobody. Getting better nobody. Uh, so I actually had to put the core product on hold and I've only just launched it in the last week. Uh, and I went and spent a lot of time, energy, money and effort on my gifts and my product for prospects. So building the cookbooks and my product for prospect gifts. Mm -hmm. Um, I've run a lot of workshops uh, where I'm out talking to people um, all the time about gut health and then doing things like my podcast. I've run a SIBO cooking show on YouTube. All of this free content that people can gorge on. That is such a great story. And boy, does Rebecca go on to reveal some amazing tips on how to create a profitable sales funnel. I think you're going to really love that one. You'll find the full interview plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free on your favorite podcast catcher. I like uh, Pocket Cast, actually. That's what I'm using at the moment, have been for a long time. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Hit the contact button over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com where you can email me, connect with me on social and grab a signed copy of my book, The Boomerang Effect. It's about 500 bucks a copy, but it's worth it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's 400 No, it's not. It's 30 bucks. Hey, be sure to uh, check out the American Express Business Explorer card. If you love the idea of your business expenses rewarding you, Go ahead and search Amex Business to find out more. And check out Design Crowd, the world's number one custom design marketplace where, with access to just a lazy 550,000 designers, you'll get the perfect design every time. And you can get 100 bucks off your brief at designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. Hey, if you love the Small Business Big Marketing Show, then let another business owner know about it by grabbing their phone, opening up the podcast app, searching Small Business Big Marketing, hit subscribe, say you're welcome and move on. Do that five or ten times a week. I'd love you for it. Until next week, I am Timbo Reed. Always have been, always will be. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. 